do like a cup of tea. I do like a cup of tea. And I'm liking, I'm liking this boat in Malarkey. It is good. And I'm liking the boat. I'm beginning to understand it. Welcome to Sandbag Sunday. Another, another day. Although I'm, what am I doing? I'm closer to Watford. I know the boaty vlogs are a little bit behind, which is which is one of those things. Um, also, um, this vlog is going to be about towpath tales. I do wander around the towpath, as you know, a few times, and and um, early mornings, midday, it doesn't matter where I, I wander around. I, and this morning I was wandering around to to recce a new a new mooring spot, which is well beyond about four or five locks away, and I've done seventeen and a half thousand steps in doing that there and back. Which actually it was it was a nice little wonder, and I saw some interesting people. Um, There's a guy that I saw oh three locks away, and he was just sat on the side of his boat, and he was nursing his dog that was very poorly, and we had a chat, and his dog was kind of on its last legs, to coin a phrase. Uh, very sad, you know. And he was a bit upset, and I was having a chat with him, and uh, you know, he, he, oh yeah. And he was saying, oh, what are you doing, mate? I said, I'm looking for more in space. Oh, you can have this one when I've gone. Anyway, we left. And I said, oh, what's your name? He goes, John. I said, oh, I'm Chris. Shook hands and that was it. But I thought he said Tom. So I said, oh, I'll see you later then, Tom. He goes, no, it's John. Like John the Baptist. And I said to him, oh, John the Baptist. I said, do you know what the difference between John the Baptist and Winnie the Pooh were? He says, no. I said, oh, they've got the same middle name. He laughed. Um, he kind of left, he says, oh. <laughs> he said, thanks, mate, you have cheered me up. And uh, that was, that was quite nice, you know, having a nice little chat with someone and, uh, you know, just so happened that I was able to tell a gag at the right time. And then I was walking back and someone, he was a runner. And then suddenly, excuse me, mate, whoa. Where, where did that come from? I'm normally awake, but I was I was in oh, who's that? I was in a um, a dream world, a dream world where I was thinking about stuff and looking at the trees and listening to birds. Suddenly, wah, got it off, make me jump. It really did. Oh, and there's you know there's another, another quick one because it's only be a quick vlog. The fella uh, wandering down the towpath, wanders down, not really looking at me, looked at the boat, and as he passed me, he goes, nice narrow, mate, nice narrow. <laughs> I kind of thought, typical East End um, accent, proper Cockney accent, nice narrow, mate, and wandered off. <laughs> I think there's people on the towpath, um, yeah, it's just characters and I've noticed when I'm walking around with a camera in my hand uh, people stop to talk it's like for example um, someone stopped me he goes oh uh, what photos are you taking and I said oh you know just some I said what's good at the eye doesn't necessarily look good on film he goes, oh, my mate takes brilliant photos of, of uh, birds and stuff. I said, oh, yeah, he's probably got a fast lens. W which means, basically, the reaction of half pressing the shutter or, or doing the automatic focusing bit. You push the button, focuses. Some lenses, the more pro lenses, are very quick at focusing. And I've tried a pro lens on this camera and it is amazingly quick. And it's, you only have to half press it, gone. It's proper pin sharp. I've got amateur lenses, really. So I have to work a little bit harder. And when I try and photograph birds, 
by the time by the time the lens has thought about it bird's gone and that's happened a few times that happened at a duck i knew it was going to fly off i knew it was going to fly off and as i waited and waited and waited put the camera down flew off typical and that's kind of what i said about on wednesday's vlog you know that that but i did manage to catch it but i had the wrong camera settings it needs to be on a fast a fast shutter speed and and so i got flappy wing motion there's a little bit of blurry motion on there which but you know reasonably sharp but there's the difference between pin sharp pro lens sharp normal amateur type lens and um getting it right which makes it a little bit sharper but when the bird's in flight anyway it's one of those things i've got to put up with and i can't afford like 1500 2000 pound lens just a little bit out of my price range i'm not a pro i'm just an amateur i'm just a bloke doing photos and some of them turn out really well and you know the landscape ones can turn out really well because i've got time to to make that exactly how i want it doesn't always happen but you know generally speaking and i was sat on the on the front of the boat stern i like to think about that no the bow <laughs> sat on the bow in in between my um poopins just sat there early morning having a cup of tea and there's a fella that walks past and he goes all right mate i said yeah yeah he goes what's in the bins how do you say it so i said oh hey he goes what i said yeah. so he said oh now those of you that don't know english english that could be stuff oh it's just a load of just low stuff in the bin you know or, but uh, you know i wanted to tell the truth anyway he pushed me a bit didn't he he pushed me he goes what you mean oh yeah 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 that's what it is well why well here's the time i thought oh, do i do it or not uh, so i thought i'll take him to burger king and give him a bit of a whopper i said to him well funnily enough i says about you know when it gets proper dark 12 o'clock ish i said let's put the bin on the on the bottom of the well deck open it up and do a deposit he goes no i said yeah you don't i said no i don't actually i just but i said i'm just waffling a bit but i have that kind of concept in the boat well he said now i think generally speaking people don't appreciate what's on boats i think and i i was exactly the same used to run past the boats when i was at Oxbridge on the on you know run on the towpath run go past these but never never blind bit of notice what goes on on, on the boats you just boat and that's it people live in it i didn't consider showers toilets anything like that I never saw them really it's you know just didn't see it and i don't think composting or separating toilets was, was the thing then anyway it just didn't even cross my mind and i don't think it crossed this fella's mind anyway he says to me so you sort of go toilet in a bucket well i said it's like a toilet i said but you have a bottle which you wee in and a bucket which you have a poo in so he goes doesn't it stink i says no funnily enough it doesn't i said i'll put cat litter at the bottom a wooden pellet cat litter and that soaks up the moisture and gets rid of the smell and and it doesn't smell anyway i said it appears to me that if you do a deposit in your own toilet drop the kids off at the pool for example i said it's the water that that makes it smell a bit i said no, no i've never even i know my poo smells roses but even even me no it doesn't smell at all and he goes oh and he, and he said and then you empty it in here in in the green bin i said yeah and then what happened so i said well i had add this and add that and do some composting i said in about two months time it kind of looks like that look he goes oh that's interesting isn't it that's pretty good that i said yeah i'm quite impressed to be fair quite impressed 
And I said, but, I said, you have that bucket and then you have to clean it out. I said, the only thing, this is, this is the second whopper I gave him. I said, the only thing that sometimes you get a bit of stubborn stain, put your finger in there, he goes, oh, no, you don't do that. And he kind of got the gist that I was taking the mick again. But um, I, said, no, I said, no, you don't, you, I said, you know, I said, use a spatula. <laughs> I said, but you need to wash it up if you're going to cook with it again. <laughs> he started to laugh. But mind you, someone did say, a commenter did say they use a spatula to get rid of the, the stains, the, the you know, the, the baked on stains. Oh, I haven't, <laughs> I just, <laughs> finger. Um, but it's got, it's got gloves on and uh, you know, I, norm I always have a, uh, one of them baby wipe type things, you know, those, those wipes that get rid of all the stain anyway. That, that, was, <laughs> that was a couple of chats, a couple of tall tales that I've had on the towpath. Tall tales of the towpath. And uh, another thing I was going to talk about quickly was um, was funeral. Uh, so the Queen... The Queen had her funeral on Monday and I thought it was a lovely job. And there's a few things I want to point out to a few, few of the unknown unknowns. If you don't know, you don't know and all that sort of stuff. Number one, it was a lovely day. I tell you, if you're stood there and it's raining, it doesn't matter what the event was that you took part in, in probably the, the event of your lifetime. There's not many monarchs you're, you're going to um, go to the, you know, be in the funeral. Um, you probably won't be in a position to be one of the blokes on the shop floor. You know, you'll be far higher up the, the rank structure and therefore there's less positions and all that sort of stuff. So for those that were involved, um, I did Queen Mum's funeral and it's a great experience. But let me tell you something, I've done one or two ceremonial tasks where it's honked it down with rain. That's the only thing you remember. Do you remember that? It absolutely, absolutely drenched and this, that and the other. So someone, whoever looks down, decided it's going to be a good day um and it was a lovely day um the sun was out people were out and all that sort of stuff and i think it was great now the other thing i want to mention is the three services and it was a well organized well done big Vern, gsm garrison sergeant major for organizing all that sort of stuff as he does um, and all three services so you've got Nine Megan Company, Grenadier Guards, you had the Queen's Colour Squadron, I'm not sure if they're called the King's Colour Squadron now, don't know, but as was the Queen's Colour Squadron and the, the Royal Navy. So Army, Air Force, Navy. Army, professional drillsmen. Air Force, professional drillsmen. Navy, would they do it slightly different? Because the average Navy bloke, woman, were well, they're floating around on the Oggin, or under the Oggin. Well, they, they, their job is being out on ships and stuff. And whilst you've got some shore based, they're doing specific jobs. So the only big pool of manpower the Navy have got is those who have just completed their trade training, or not trade training, they're just their, their basic training. And they, they hold them for a while. And then they do ceremonial tasks and all that sort of stuff that comes up. And it just so happened that the funeral needed doing and this, this bunch of manpower well, you're doing it now it, i think is very difficult for the navy and it's the only, and i'm not knocking them in any way shape or form because that's the way that they have to run because as i said most people are floating around on the ogin of all the three services i think the royal navy did a fantastic job um pulling the gun carriage and uh I just they were brilliant and I think they, they did themselves proud they did the Queen proud they did the country proud as all three services did and I also think the, the lads of the, um, uh, the the bearer party it wasn't a surprise to me that they're all the same height uh, you know that, that's one of those things it makes life easy but the orb the big orb thing and the scepter and the crown how did they stay on the coffin I know when I've dressed coffins before, 
you normally have a little tack to put the hat on and the and the, uh, the pin cushion for the medals and and if you've got um teeth arms you'll have a bayonet yeah you know, if it's an officer you'd have a sword and they're sort of tacked on to make sure they don't move about but i do wonder because they didn't move you know the, the orb was in was in a cradle the scepter was kind of in in i don't know like a, a queue you know you're playing snooker you've got a bridge haven't you he's got a bridge and it's his but they just didn't move i don't know how heavy they are i think the crown's reasonably heavy but it didn't didn't wobble yeah i i think they did a fantastic job the bearer party gun carriage party um tri-service guard of honor party the marching troops the police we forget about the police there's police every i don't know how many how many meters is it every 10 meters or so watching the crowds facing out because they don't they're not allowed to face in their their threat is out there and i think that everything from the organization for the police three services gun carriage bearer party and even the bbc uh, and i think hugh edwards fantastic he's always good at doing that sort of stuff he does he does the uh royal albert hall stuff very good and um i think it was very good coverage and it was great and just want to take hat off to all those people involved there we go and good luck to the king king charles iii anyway that's enough <laughs> what's i'll start ranting on which i've been accused of so um if you're still here thanks for watching thanks for liking thanks for subscribing and um uh, more next week don't know but i did say i did say that um if i've got nothing to talk about i won't talk well, i've got something to talk about this week because i've wandered down towpath and, and funeral so wednesday definitely definite wednesdays ciao papa